and welcome to the Bureau Podcast with Matt, Mike and Mel. It's been yet another huge couple of weeks in Saigon in F&B. What's with all the events? I don't know. Yeah, Lots uh, of budgets well, flying around. <laughs> totally. Uh, well, the Bureau Briefs is back bigger than ever in which we chat about some of the many events we wriggled our way into and didn't quite get to over the past two weeks. Mm. We get the lowdown on the Harper's Bazaar Vietnam Star Awards Night of Nights. We get all fuzzy and excited about some new arrivals on the scene. We launch Movember and we shout out some of our favourite influencers. Hey guys, are you ready? Yeah. Let's get into it. See. Thank you for joining me. I'm Matt Cowan, the Bureau Chief and host of the Bureau Podcast. Hey guys, uh, you were late getting here. Yeah. Three of you are pathetic. You don't care. I care. You're chef. way behind and you haven't got a fucking clue. Can we work together as a team? Yes, yes chef. chef. Uh, yes, chief. Uh, okay, that's what I want to hear. Can you <laughs> uh, obviously, uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay has not driven through District Four before. So. Uh, it sounds like Fuck he wasn't. He, <laughs> that sounds like he wasn't too happy with me either. I live here, and still, I was late. Finally, it seems like the rainy season has fizzled out. It feels like I say this every episode, but the rain appears to be less frequent, at least. I've put my poncho away for the final time this th- season, I think. Um, Alexa, <laughs> how's the weather in Ho Chi Minh? Today, expect a high of 32 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I must have been right. 32 degrees Celsius. She didn't mention (laughs) rain, so everything must be good. Well, uh, someone who is far from wet behind the ears. In (laughs) fact, she's seen more rainy seasons in Saigon than a Japanese businessman has the inside of KTVs around Taiwan Lung. It's the Bureau's (laughs) chief content manager and go-getter, Melanie Kassel. Well, actually, my first apartment in Saigon was at the expat ghetto in uh, Taiwan Long. Okay, but Mel, have mm-hmm. you been inside a KTV yet? Yes, a legitimate oh. KTV, not uh. the ones with a happy ending, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the only happiness I get there is if I get like a 10 stars on the scoreboard. <laughs> okay, and uh, ooh, moving on and joining us as usual is our chief shutterbug and uh, the somewhat exhausted Mike Palumbo. Mm. Hello. What have You're you right, been Mike? doing? Why are you exhausted, man? Now, now Mike, I'm pretty. Uh, s- have you been inside a KTV? Have you just come out of one? Is that it? Uh, uh, what is this KTV? No, well, I'm pretty about? certain. Harry OK <laughs> Television. I, I know, I know. I'm pretty certain you've been inside one, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, he doesn't really want to talk to talk about that. It seems. Uh, so perhaps not KTVs, but you've done karaoke. Yeah. Surely. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think we're all looking around here and nodding our heads. Uh, Mike, what's your go-to song mm. karaoke? Mm. That's a, that's a mm. good question. Um, probably, <laughs> long pause. Okay. Probably, right. probably uh, I, I don't know, I don't ever sing karaoke. Ah. <laughs> Prince, oh. probably. I don't know. Okay. Prince, oh, okay. like Purple Rain or something. Yeah. Really slow. Purple Rain's too boring for a... Mm. For a, karaoke. Uh, for a karaoke song. Let's go, let's go. What about yours, Melanie? Oh, ABBA, Dancing Queen. Oh, okay, nice one. Yep, Gets everybody yep. up on their feet. Yep, well, mine would be Footloose, Kenny Loggins. <laughs> uh, haven't done it in a while, so I probably should dust it off a bit. Shows it. the age, we'll, eh? We might do a podcast in a <laughs> karaoke box one of these days soon. Well, let's kick off with the Bureau Brief, shall we? All right. Mike, All right. you good with that? It's a segment I, where we tell each other briefly what we got up to related to F&B since our last episode. Mm-hmm. It might be a dinner, event, festival, bar, whatever. Now, this episode, we're going to do things a little bit differently. Okay. Because there was so much on, and mm-hmm. in order to keep things brief, I want you to introduce your three favourites and tell us what you liked about them All and right. perhaps, if you dare, what you didn't like about them. Who okay. wants to go first? Well, actually, I don't have three, but I have a really big one. And I did two things in that. Okay. So when you do the math, it's kind of like three, okay. right? Okay, all right. Okay. Far away. <laughs> so for me, uh, very briefly, had a great time at the Fort Saigon Gourmet Week, Michelin star and celebrity chefs at the Sofitel Saigon Plaza. Nice one, yes. Yep. So uh, the Bureau was invited to the media press conference and there were, it was such a how do you say, an inspiring right. talk from the uh, the Sofitel uh, invited 
uh, celebrity and Michelin star chefs. Obviously, all of them were women. Right. And so they talked about uh, things like how it is to work in a male dominated industry yep. and what is the, uh, the Accor group uh, doing right. to, you know, equalize the playing field. And they've come up with this wild uh, F&B. So that's women in leadership. Uh, development. Right. So that's, cool. that's rolling out okay. throughout the, uh, the Accor group. So that was great. Um, also got to say hello and shake hands with three chefs who had Michelin stars nice. yeah, tagged to their okay. names. All right. So one of them is Julia Comp. She's uh, German and she's actually the youngest okay. uh, to have uh, that accolade. We also have the youngest ever. Well, yeah, currently. Wow, yes. okay. Uh, German, I uh, know, French. Uh, so she's German. We have also had a French chef named uh, Flora Mikula and a Spanish lady, Maria Jose San Romain. Okay, yes. nice one. All right, sounds exciting. And then attached to the Fort Saigon Gourmet Week, I went to the high tea with Chef Keiko Nagae. And Chef Keiko was the only pastry chef in that lineup. Right. Okay. So... Amazing afternoon with beautiful, delicately sweet um, pastries. Yeah, I saw the live video. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. There's some pretty tasty looking stuff there. So yeah. that was my highlight okay. for the Bureau Brief. Nice one. How about you, Mike? Did you have a highlight? <clears throat> yeah. Well, <laughs> funny you asked. Um, so the dinner with um, Peter... Uh, at Angang. Peter uh, Gunn Franklin. Yes. Yep. PCF. Yeah, PCF. Uh, here. They had a um, kind of a, a cross, um, I don't know how you would say it. Um, like a, a collab. A collab. Yeah. Yeah. A collaboration. You. Yeah. yeah. Uh, between yep. a, um, a Thai chef and um, was it Chris Thompson did the wine pairing with it as well. Yep. Mm. Yep. So it was a very... Um, Triple very, collab. Yeah, it was... Pretty interesting. It was nice. Yeah, it was really nice. Very creative. Yeah. I mean, it, it's as creative as it gets in Saigon yep. with Peter, with, with whatever he does anytime. So, what day. happened? Did they like cook? With it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Did they cook like Thai and Vietnamese fusion dishes or they just served one um, I, independently? Don't well, ask me. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Um, so, it was uh, 10 courses total. Um, oh, wow. Uh, five, five from. Peter Five from Psalm. Mm -hmm. Psalm was her name, yep. I believe. Chef, Chef Psalm. Psalm. Yep. And um, uh, yeah, it was just alternating. Um, so you had, you know, like demi portions of, um, you know, like an appetite, two appetizers, two entrees, the dessert. That's great. Yeah. And um, I think on the Thai side, you had a lot of um, Thai influenced food. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had like an Indian style dish as well, like yep. a lot of those flavors and stuff like that. Yeah. Were, Quite spicy. Yeah, so yeah. Some of it. yeah, curries. Um, and the Vietnamese was, you know, pretty straightforward. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think one thing for me that that it highlighted was um, I got a better understanding of of perhaps how Vietnamese the Vietnamese palate doesn't really right. yeah. mix mm. so well with Thai food. I mean, you they're just so different. Yeah, it's so stark, yeah. isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I love both, but. Yeah, well, it's a good experiment anyway, yeah, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like those Thai dishes, I mean, like, although good, I mean, they were just very rich and spicy. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. there's it's just totally different from what you're used to here. But I bet the wine helped it uh, go down go a little down. bit yeah. smoother. Oh, it did. <laughs> it did. <laughs> the pairing was quite... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Uh, How well, about you, Matt? Well, uh, for me, the first one that, that made an impact was uh, the Deme Hop Risen, the first steakhouse, and... Zorba mm, pop up. Another collab. Yeah, that was a big collab over there in uh, Phu Nhong district, um, I think it was. Um, what I loved about it was that there were four, four young local entrepreneurs getting together. Uh, obviously, Deme and Hop Rise and a, a beer. Uh, breweries. Craft beers. Yep. Craft beers. Uh, there were DJs. Um, of course, there was a steak dinner going on as well mm -hmm. amongst all this. And also uh, this group called Zorba. They're like a uh, production company, mm -hmm. right, Mel, I think? Yeah, filmmakers. Uh, yeah, a bunch of young filmmakers who uh, were sneak previewing 
their entry for this year's Khan 48 Hour Film Festival. Yeah. Uh, so that was pretty amazing. There, there was, was all this stuff going on. There was also an installation art at the lobby area. Yeah, Remember right. That's right. Remember before you went yeah, up to the right. second yeah, floor? Yeah, where the DJs yeah. were. Yeah. Was it? So it's yeah. pretty good, yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty amazing. That was great. Um, great beers, great people, just young go-getters. Enthusiastic. Yeah, very enthusiastic. Uh, we also popped into the Saigon Street Food Festival there at the Youth Cultural Centre last weekend. That was mm -hmm. great. Um, I think the highlight for me was that was this emergence of food truck culture in Saigon. Yeah, but the food trucks don't move. They're just parked. Mostly. So it's very different yeah. from the other food truck yeah. cultures, let's say in L.A. Yeah. Well, in L.A., they just the stay, they stay in one yeah. place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, like, like, yeah, oh, but right. like, like they'll, they'll change addresses. Yeah, true. That's so, what like, I mean. It's yeah, not yeah. as yeah, yeah, mobile. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. not like a park yeah. where they just stay there every Well, I mm. think some of these were that old or just not <laughs> – Re yeah. mobile Repurposed. that they were dragged they, yeah. in. They literally can't move. <laughs> there were yeah. tuk-tuks, vans, yeah. Yeah. Um, little yeah. little jalopies that were yeah. dressed yeah. up. I mean, I, I will say that, like, uh, that's one thing I miss about living in Los Angeles is that mm. um, you 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 would follow a certain food truck and that's you know right. their schedule. Yeah, so it's right. like yeah. one day it would be, like, at the Orange County Fairgrounds mm -hmm. and then, like, next week it would be in, like, yeah. Long Beach, uh, you know, uh, yep. whatever, Queen Mary... And that's a bit like the strategy that Dr. Berger yeah, yeah. is yeah. doing at the moment. You right. know, they're posting on Facebook and saying, hey, where here's, here's where yeah, we're going to be. Yeah, you follow them on, yeah. on, on, on yeah. social media and they... Yep. Oh, and they yep. even post photos of them traveling to that yeah, place. Cool. So it gets people excited. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, good burgers too. Yeah. Well, speaking of big nights out, and we've had a few of them this week, perhaps the biggest ticket in town was last night's Harper's Bazaar Star Awards at the Reverie. Ooh la la. I didn't, we're, we're, I didn't see you there, Mike. I didn't see you either there. Weren't you invited? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I got an invite. Yeah, why uh, didn't you just, go? Oh, I just thought I'd rather give it up for uh, someone else. You know, really? someone, someone else a bit more deserving. Really? Is that the real reason? <laughs> well, uh, you can you can find <laughs> out because we're gonna give uh, we're gonna give Chris Thompson a call. Of course, uh, Chris Thompson is the editor at large at Harper's Bazaar Vietnam, and uh, he had a big part in part to play in in organising the event. Wow. And, uh, getting some people along. Oh, so, we're going to get some inside scoop. So we're going to get an a little bit of an inside scoop uh, from him. So let's uh, just give him a call, hey? All right. I've got his number here. Is your refrigerator running? <laughs> I hope he's awake. Hey. Hey. Good morning, man. Hey, Chris. How are you, buddy? Hi, Chris. It's Mel also is on the line. And it's Mike, too. Oh, great to hear you. Yeah, the three of us are here. Um, so it's good to see that you're up. What time is it? Yeah, 11, I've, I've, not, yep. <laughs> I've not been up for so long, actually. The, the after party continued into, into Layla <laughs> with Jay last night. Oh, oh wow. Okay, nice. Little, and yeah, so, and so, so Jay was uh, he he took out an award, I believe. So he was mixologist of the year. Wow! Yeah, that yeah. Was, oh, really? That, that was great, and mm. and you know another another friend of ours, Peter, was was the chef of the year. Yep. Awesome. Yep, we heard that. Yeah. Yep. Let's start from the top, so, though, Chris. Sure. Yes. What were you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, it was a, this is the theme. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, the, the theme was sort of, uh, you know, it was an ancient Greek gods and goddess kind of style. So, I mean, ultimately it was a, it was sort of a white party. So I had a, you know, I, I had a white. You went in a toga? Which had, <laughs> well, I, I, I think I'd have, if I'd have been in the gym every morning and, um, wow. you know, doing all of this sort of swimming that, that Matt does, I'd have been wanting to show off the, the guns in a, in a toga, but. Sadly, I'm not, um, you know, I've not got it in the, in the locker at the moment, so it was a white suit for me. But, Chris, you are white yeah. by race. I'm born so white. You, got, <laughs> you were born white, so you had it in the bag, man. <laughs> well, that was it. That, that, that was it. So, I did. I did manage to put a, a gold tie on, you know, so that was kind of a, oh, a bit so extra for me. Nice. All right. Hip Jay. Yeah. So give us a rundown and some of the highlight awards. How many did you give out? Well, also, there was nearly 30 awards altogether. Wow. So 
So everybody gathered at the, the Reverie Saigon. Mm-hmm. Um, came in, came in through the through the Don Coy entrance, and it almost felt a bit like. You know when you see these at uh, the, the Cannes Film Festival and <gasps> wow. all of these um, all of these movie stars are all arriving. And oh wow! I mean, there was there was a lot of fans outside who were no. gathering. Oh, really? Seeing, How many waiting for you, Chris? Some of these really. So, so, when I went out to, to get a few bottles of water for the team, there was not even a ripple. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think, Who's this guy? <laughs> I think oh, they wow. might have thought I was the security guard. Was the security guard. <laughs> wow, looked like but, a uh, uh, a fun evening. So, who was? Uh, yeah. So you you were earlier starting to tell us that Jay from Layla was mixologist of the year and PCF um, was chef of the year. Any other shout outs? Well, it was great to see some of the really established stars who, who were there. So mm. we had some lifetime awards for, uh, there's a gentleman, his name, Dan Vin Hung. He's a real um, okay. music icon. And, mm. and he kicked off the show with a, with a couple of amazing numbers. Wow. You know, with his, with his dance troupe as well, real high energy uh, mm. performance. So he, he was great. Um, and uh, you may well have heard of, Chung Yok An, you know, very oh, famous um, yes. movie oh, actress. You know that she was my first boss in Saigon when I started working here in oh. 2006. Wow. Yeah, I worked with her in Anviet okay. Advertising. She she actually won the Lifetime Award. Wow. Nice. Movie. Yeah. Oh, TNA, and yay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fangirling. You see, you see these guys on the, on the screen, but when, when, you, when you actually... Get up close and personal, mm. you, and you meet them in the flesh. I mean, they, mm. she looked great. I of mean, course, mm. yes. One of one of so so many others, but um, you know, and really, really sort of friendly, and uh, she seemed very happy to be receiving the award. Uh, so it was great to see her. Oh, well deserved. She's amazing. There's a there's a lady. Her name is Park Yu Ann. And she'd been a very, very well established um, Miss Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Even maybe twenty years ago, she may have got that first award. And but last night, just looked absolutely superb. And wow! Uh, you no, know, she was a she was a great addition to the to the evening as well. Mm. So, um, sorry for my ignorance, but how long has Harper's Bazaar Star Awards been going on, Chris? This is probably the first. The first one we've done, actually, and so oh. the magazine's been established in, in Vietnam for eight years now, and we've always done we've always done lots of events and been associated with all of the with the Vietnam fashion show and, and so on. But this is the the first time that we've really kicked this off, and I, I think I think off the back of last night and how uh, how well it went down, we'll we'll certainly be coming back again for, for 2020. That's great. So are there are we going to be looking forward to more F&B related awards? I think one of the things we're definitely trying to do is to is to widen the scope of the awards to bring mm. in you know uh, as best, many segments best podcast. of um, <laughs> 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 we'll talk, Chris. We'll talk. Yeah. Nice, nice plug, Matt. Well, the, hey, this is the way the trends are going. The, 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 you know, the, the YouTube, you're a YouTuber now, aren't you? Like, yeah. Creators, so, uh, YouTube creators. Yeah, I don't think we'll win one for that one, but <laughs> we'll try our luck with the podcast. Um, okay, Chris, well, thanks for uh, taking some time out. Um, you, you know, obviously you had a great night last night. And where are you off to now? You're off to brekkie or brunch, I presume. Well, uh, Matt, you, you may well know that there's, there's quite an important uh, sporting uh, occasion this afternoon, isn't there? Oh, the uh, the, uh, the Ashes rivalry will be renewed, England Australia, isn't oh. it? So I've got to I've got to find a seat somewhere and see if I can watch that. Fantastic! <laughs> Sounds awesome. Okay, Chris. May uh, the best team win. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure we will. Nice to talk to you, Chris. Yeah. Oh, cheers, guys. Take it Have easy. Have a great weekend. Thank you. You, you too. too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Oh, wow. That was, uh, That's Chris, great. Chris Thompson, editor-at-large at Harper's Bazaar, Vietnam. So that was the official um, presser. Why oh. don't we find out more details yeah, well, from a more unofficial presser? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, Chris is a very polite chap, isn't he? Yes. You know, so he uh, he gave us the the very clean version of 
what what of unfolded what last yeah. night. Now, uh, for the uh, for the balanced review, for the less uh, <laughs> sanitized fair, fair version, and yeah, uh, we're going to give the Bartist Richie Fawcett from the studio side on a call. I believe he's just jumped out of the shower, so uh, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't answer with the video call. <laughs> Let's give him a go. Richie. Richie. Hey, hey, Richie. How are you? You're on. You're on uh, the bureau podcast. Yeah. Sounds like you're in a motorbike, dude. Sounds like you're in the shower. Are you? Uh, are you? Um, <laughs> are you having a meeting or something? Uh, no. <laughs> we thought we'd give you a call about uh, the Harper's oh, yeah. Bazaar uh, party last night. Oh yeah. Um, I'm yeah, so- right. Can you hear me? Because I'm in, I'm in. I'm still. I'm still at the after party. Oh, you still there? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that, that's what it's actually, we... Yep. It's actually in a clinic. It's actually in the lifestyle clinic. Yeah, uh, it's a two-for-one offer. Uh, <laughs> it's actually on food, on food shop. So uh, I, I thought I'd take one. Yeah. Uh, so you haven't been to bed and yet? Actually, it's buy, buy two, get one free, actually. So, um, so why not? He's on the it's coffee now. It's quite full. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so how was it last so, night, yeah. mate? I mean, I've never been to, uh, you know, an award ceremony. Um, anyway, it's like opening an envelope, isn't it? You know, so um, the award goes to blah, blah, blah. It was it was quite a funny night, actually. I mean, it was obviously full of the, the glitter of the, of the, uh, the society of the creme de la creme of uh, Saigon, you know. The, <laughs> oh, is that what you call uh, yourself the these you know? days? <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently you know what they call the... themselves. So, uh, anyway, you but, know what? Um, yeah, it was, it was all right. It was, uh, you know, a few few cameras, about 5,000 of them. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, there was a bit of a media scrum, obviously, when um, when the bill came. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> after that, fashion show. <laughs> what what <laughs> were you wearing? What were you wearing? Well, Give us well, some visuals. Yeah, I mean, visuals, yeah, well, what now? <laughs> I've got... I've got I've got a, I've got a, one of those green smocks on, but uh, anyway. But uh, but earlier, uh, yeah, I just had part, part of a three piece suit on, wow. a white thing, you know, wow. with, a, with a white trousers, white white shirt, and a, and a sparkly tie. I think it was um, the theme of the party was um, mm. Greek gods and goddesses, and uh, I saw actually I saw a, a few of them there. I saw a, like a Cleopatra. Uh, oh wow! Look alike. I said, actually, you're looking pretty hot for two thousand years old since you've been dead. <laughs> You're looking pretty good, I must say. Uh, so, uh, a couple of people we know took out some awards. Yeah, I was there to support. Uh, yep. A couple of our, our great friends, so Jay Moore, right. and um, Mixologist of the Year, and Peter Franklin, who's Chef of the Year. And uh, there was no speeches. It was basically it was a bit like a, a like an award factory, to be honest. With you. <laughs> Just cranking them out. Wheeled back to the chair again. <laughs> Um, so it was in and out job. Um, there was some, there was some yeah, I think I knew about maybe 10% of the award winners. Okay. Um, do you want me to read out the name? Oh, sure. You have it? I've got the, yeah, I mean, I've got one more here. There's 22 awards. Are you sitting down? You've got three hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I think, I think we're good. <laughs> What about the gossip? The gossip from yeah. the bar- from the from the bathrooms. I wasn't Any- really. Yeah, was, there was not much. I mean, I wasn't really um, earwigging on 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 any of that. It was all visuals, all that kind of stuff. You know, everyone's looking at each other. You put everybody in a, in a room together, and they all look at each other, don't they? So, <laughs> um, I think it's one of those moments where, as soon as the, the, the show was over, the catwalk was, uh, was was flooded by the audience and everyone doing selfies, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and then straight uh, to the so, after party, was it at Layla? Well. Straight to the after party at Layla. Yep, yeah. Yep. So uh, well done to, to to those guys. I mean, they, they're working extremely hard and, and and making great changes in the industry. So for us, it was uh, it was a pleasure to go and support them. Um, obviously, uh, when they did the, I think the the award was given by um, Luke Wing, okay. uh, chef yep. as well. And, nice. uh, so it was, yeah, a few familiar faces there. Um, but it, I think it's just a sign of the times, isn't it? Because you know, I think something like Half of the Bazaar is a, it's a well-known magazine, but it's, it's obviously known for fashion, I guess. Yep. Um, but then it's now it's gone on from fashion to stage performances awards. They had, for example, 
you know, costume designer of the year, stylist of the year, photographer of the year. That's all fashion stuff. Right. Then you got stage performances awards. You got male artist of the year, composer of the year, dancer of the year, uh, master of ceremonies of the year, public speaker of the year. Well, <laughs> then you go on to movie awards, the actress of the year, and then lifestyle awards, which is obviously where uh, interior designer was uh, Ty, uh, Ty Kong, yeah. uh, mm. Jeff Peter, and uh, Nick Rogers of the year. Jay. Uh, pod- award, podcast of the year uh, award. <laughs> lifetime, <laughs> podcast of the year. Say again. Podcast. Podcast of the year. That's next year, apparently. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So, apparently, anyway, so right. what I was saying is, it's sign of the times here uh, that, you know, a few years ago, I don't think you'd even have that many categories, would you, of, of no. people doing stuff yeah. like five years ago. There wouldn't even, there would just be. Yes. It would just be Botox, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but did, the you, did, they, uh, did they tell you guys how they chose the winners, though? Was it like popular vote? Was it like the editors of the magazine? Or, or how much money they paid? I think it was the owner of the magazine. <laughs> ah, yeah. okay. Yep. It was uh, democratic, democratic voting, yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, so, Richie, just to finish up, uh, what are the plans for the rest of the day? After the clinic. Uh, well, uh, after the clinic, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well... Back to the studio. Okay. And uh, en route right now. And then, uh, yeah, we'll get on with a few more. Um, we've got okay. submissions on at the moment. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of busy time catching up with uh, with all this drawing. Off to me and Mark next month for the Year and Wadi Book Festival for a Very live nice. performance art. Um, yep. So, yeah, so it's all going on. It's all happening. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, mate. Well, thanks for your time. Yeah. And um, we'll, we'll talk to you soon, right, hey? No, I'll, get, I'll get out of the shower now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, mate. Bye. All right, cheers. All right. Bye-bye. Have a good day. See you, bye. You too. Later. Sound okay, like, sound like Richie, Richie had two-for-one coffees, too. Yeah. <laughs> he cracks me up, that guy. Um, yeah, so really interesting. Um, uh, looks like you missed out, Mr. Cowan. Um, you should have yeah, gone. I, I, yeah. Oh, well, next year. We'll, we'll uh, invest in a nice uh, white suit. We'll invest in an award for podcast of the year. Okay, so from prestigious magazine awards, let's get excited, shall we? Let's get excited! This is our segment where we tell each other what bar, restaurant, cafe, drink, trend, event or food we should all be getting excited about. Who's going to go first? Oh, me. Okay, doke. All right. Go, Mel. Well, um, last Thursday, we were invited to the Mad Cow Wines and Tapas pairing event. Mm. So we haven't really heard a lot from Mad Cow lately. So they are starting to do more events mm. um, in the next couple of months. So last Thursday was the first uh, in a series. They're going to have another one. The next one is uh, on November 14. The next one is on December 12th and um, January 16th. If you're planning way in advance, those are the key dates. That's the Mad Cow Wines and Tapas pairing. So last Thursday when we went there, they showcased their um, the Australian wines mm. that they have on mm. um, at their restaurant. And Very nice. We had a taste of uh, the new tapa selection. There was this re- uh, chili chicken uh, that was really good. The oysters. Oh uh, yeah, the oysters. Oh, were, yeah, top it's notch. fresh yeah. oysters with a little bit of the vinegary and onions on it, but on top. And this is the first time I've had oysters with this kind of of dressing. It almost tasted like cream yeah, oh, or a, a bechamel like, sauce. I think they were sort of uh, pitching it as a, you, you'll know this, Mike, espuma. Is that right? Is that a... Uh, like a foam? Like a foam. Oh, that yeah. stuff. Yeah. That stuff. But it was tasty. It was really nice. These oysters. The molecular yeah. gastronomy I stuff. Would, yeah. I would go there in a, in a flash for those oysters. Uh, and of course, yep. yeah. And of course, they had the um, um, slivers of Iberico ham, and they had um, octopus uh, and it's a on be- a potato. It's a beautiful location too. Oh isn't yeah, it? like great views of the city. Mm-hmm. Um, Nice, nice spot. A great idea to have uh, some tapas and, and great wines. Yeah, really. so looking forward to the next Mad Wine and Tapas pairing. That's at the Mad Cow Wine and Grill at the Pullman Saigon Centre. Thanks for that, Mel. I have an update on Movember, guys. It's now about three weeks since I've shaved. Um, I could see that. <laughs> but uh, the, the highlight so far is that we've got some great prizes lined up. Uh, I'm happy to announce that our friends at Melia Holtjam B 
Beach Resort. Ooh, la la. Uh, they've given us a night for two people with breakfast and transfers for one lucky, get this, female winner. Yeah. Uh, so oh, uh, we'll, we'll go yeah. into the details about that because we, we want um, uh, the ladies to enjoy the, the month as well. As well. Yeah, yep. sure. Um, and, it, of course, it wouldn't be Movember without the Bureau us chipping in. So we're giving away four bureau experiences for four lucky male winners to go and experience our cool barbershop experiences with Barbershop Vucci here in Saigon. All right. Um, and not to be outdone, our friends at Fresh Catch Vietnam, they're giving us a boat. A boat? Like a boat? A boat load. <laughs> a of, boat load of a stuff. A boat load of <laughs> seafood big enough for people to rip into, for four people to rip into. Uh, that will go to one lucky lady as well. All right. Uh, she'll be able to take along uh, three of her friends, and that's thanks to Fresh Catch Vietnam. To enter, all the blokes need to do is take a before and after photo of their moustache or beard that they've grown especially for Movember and post it in the Bureau Facebook group. And for the ladies, send in pics of your beer mo. Beer mo. Like a foam, beer foam mo. Yeah, beer foam mo. Mm. Uh, So what we want you to do is go to your favourite pub or bar, sip on a freshly poured frothy and show us your mo by posting it in the Bureau Facebook group. Wow. Uh, There's just one catch though. You have to be a Bureau Facebook group member to be eligible to win. So just simply go to uh, our Facebook page, uh, group page, which is the the Bureau group. Uh, We're pretty easy to find. Look for the pink Movember 2019 banner. Awesome. Yeah. How about you, Mike? What are you excited about? Um, Let's see here. So um, (laughs) this is a tough one for me today. Um, I see that uh, there's a new American comfort food place that opened up called The Wagon Wagon Wheel. Yes, Mm. good one. So um, can't wait to check that out. What is that? Is that like a popular place back home? Uh, no, I don't think I it's a chain. Of. I don't think no, it's a chain. No, no, no. Oh, it's not a chain. I think it's the guys from uh, TNT Barbecue. Or, right. Or, oh. right. Or one of them. Um, um, what kind of foods are they promising to give us? Uh, from what I've seen in the photos, like um, <clears throat> uh, fried chicken, fried <gasps> chicken waffles. <gasps> I assume steak, burgers. The chicken, <gasps> the Nashville <gasps> chicken. They have, they have Nashville chicken? <laughs> no, no, I, I hope so. I, I, I hope yeah, so. I'm going to go and check it out. I would assume... All right. But, you know, what, you know what happens when you assume. So, um, yeah. Nice. Um, or one could hope. Yeah. Yay. Um, and there's just though. there's just one more place I've come across. Um, I'm dying to check it out. It's called Daddy's Rooftop. Uh, it's a new bar that popped up on my feed. It looks kind of cool. I'm pretty excited about that. They have a Facebook page. Just search Daddy's Rooftop. And on Instagram, at daddies.rooftop. Uh, we missed the grand opening 20% off, but, oh, well, let's let's check it out, hey? It sounds kind of cool. Their um, social media looks kind of good. Um, nice little rooftop sort of beer bar and cocktails. Well, there you have it. Some bona fide places to get excited about in the coming weeks or so. And remember, if you check them out, tell them the Bureau sent ya. And now it's time for the classifieds. This is a segment where we give a shout out to some social media guys and gals that we follow in Vietnam and the region. Mike, you got anything? Uh, yeah, so um, I'll shout out uh, Tien. Uh, he's um, a good friend of ours at the Bureau. Um, ah, okay. So um, yep. you can follow him at um, Tien Ngoc Nguyen. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's his handle on Instagram. Okay. All right, cool. And uh, who's Tien? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I mean, like I said, he's just a, a yep. an acquaintance of ours to the Bureau. Yep. Um, Interesting character. Fashionable. I would say that. Very, very fashionable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, cool. I've got a new one I'm following. It's not F&B related per se, but they do drink a lot, it seems, <laughs> uh, going by their picks. It's called At Saigon Suck Boys. What? Yeah, interesting one. It's the Instagram account of the Saigon Suck Boys softball team. Their bio says it's about the life and times of oh, Mike. Mike's lost it. The life and times <laughs> of hot guys playing softball in Vietnam. So ladies and gents for that matter, you might want to check out their posts. Some of them are, are hilarious. Um, I'm 
just not quite sure what a suck boy is, Mike. Any ideas? Is that a baseball metaphor or something? <laughs> Sounds like a different podcast to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure how suck boys and softball can be hot, mm. uh, but I'll leave that up to you guys to decide. That's at Saigon Suck Boys. It's a crack up. They only have 50 followers at the moment, so get around them and give them a follow. All right. Now, Okay, my turn. So this should be fun. If you have been listening to the Bureau podcast since we started in our pilot episode, we actually had a segment called Whatever Happened To. Mm, That's right. And the first of our Whatever Happened To uh, shout outs was Bobby Chin. Chin, That's B-O-B-B-Y. C-H-I-N-N. That's his Instagram handle. And obviously I've been following him even since before we started the podcast. And guess what? (gasps) We finally got into Bobby Chin's radar. I'm fangirling. (laughs) So I sent him a... um, a link to the podcast and he messaged me back on Instagram. And if you don't believe me, we are going to post a screenshot of my conversation with Bobby Chin on Instagram messaging. I hope he's okay with that. I hope I'm okay with that. Oh, it's very, okay. So let me, let me just uh, do the rundown. So first he sends me a smiley face. Oh no, like a smiley face. That's like laughing with tears. Okay. So that's the image. And then he goes, I finally made it to the MIA list after surviving more than 21 years in Vietnam, 1994 to 2015. Wow. So that those were the exact dates that he was here. And then he goes, honored. Thank you. And best of luck doing what you do. Okay. And then he gives a thumb up, thumbs up emoticon. And then he goes, oops, I forgot to say, congratulations. I heard your podcast and it was really entertaining. Cool format. And as content is concerned, it's really crazy of how much the place has changed since the mid nineties. And that's just the F and B biz. Um, it's the F and B biz is so varied. You should be proud of it. Bravo. Nice. <laughs> Thanks Bobby Chin. Well, okay, Mel, you can relax now. Well, that's just about it for this episode. Thank you for joining me, guys. Again, I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Of course, anytime. Before we go, uh, one final observation from both of you about Saigon. (sighs) Mel. Mike is about to take a nap. Mike. I'm about to take a nap. Okay, well, I just want to say that I noticed this week Indoguna Vietnam is now distributing beyond food products, including sausages. Uh, so look out for plenty of beyond foodstuffs hitting restaurant menus. And imposters. Now, uh, don't forget to go to our website, thebureauasia.com, for plenty of stories and info about Vietnam and the region. Bye, guys. And you can also check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Mike. At the Bureau Asia. Thanks for listening.